Hey everybody, Max Shank here with my friend Brian, and this is Coach's Corner. This is our second episode of Coach's Corner. If you missed our talk with Victoria, I highly recommend you check it out. Anyway, Brian is the general manager slash awesome strongman at Ambition Athletics. That's his official title. It's on his business card. You can look <laughs> it up. Uh, anyway, I'm really excited. You can see we're in front of the barbells today because Brian is one of the strongest fellas I know, especially in the deadlift and... Also, he's an awesome coach, so let me hand it over to Brian. Uh, how long have you been coaching here, Brian? I've been coaching here for, I'm gonna say at least 10 years, because you started the gym in 2009, and then I came on as an intern probably a year in, and I was coaching there by the end of the year, so a little over 10 years, and I'll never forget, in fact, I like to tell people this story, that you were, you came to my party, a party at my house one time, and you were telling people, oh, I'm starting this gym, yada, 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 and you were telling me about it, and you were like, you should come like, check it out and come work out. And I was like, this motherfucker's trying to sell me a membership. And I was like, <laughs> nope, I'm poor. Like, no thank you, I'm a broke, like, young guy who's trying to become a trainer. And then it took me a while to realize that you were like, no, just like, come hang out and work out. And then I did, and then we just ended up because we would do Wednesday training sessions, do you remember? We would do oh, yeah. Wednesdays, and then it turned into Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then it was like, hey, here's how you teach somebody how to do a kettlebell swing, you know what I mean? And then we just went from there, yeah. and then... Well, I, I remember that, and uh, it makes sense that you would think I was trying to sell you, because I was literally trying to sell everybody, but if anyone <laughs> didn't want a membership, I still needed friends. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> my negotiating skills like 10 plus years ago were like, hey, do you want to do like some personal training? It's 50 an hour. And they were like, no. How about 25? Just like immediately. No, I'm not, no like, it's like, no. <laughs> okay, how about you like buy me a burrito afterward? Yeah. Just let me like would teach you how to use a kettlebell. You, would you like a personal trainer? No. How about a friend? <laughs> like, it's like, like, I'm looking for somebody to hang out with. I'm kind of lonely. I mean, it's so funny, you know, you're like, I remember it was like the, probably the biggest risk I ever took. I was 21 years old and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just like, I like fitness, so. Uh. Isn't it weird <laughs> that recently you and I were on the phone and we were just talking about like running the gym, marketing and stuff, and you were like, nobody knows what they're doing. And I'm like, it's not that, you, like, you gain more knowledge and wisdom about different areas as you grow older and just like, just mess a bunch of stuff up over time but it's weird you you still don't know what you're doing but it's just about something new all the time it's and that's just, just a growth mindset it's just the fact like when you have a lot of experience like some stuff has probably worked and that's the that's like literally the only difference because it changes too like i yeah. know i know people who have done like lots of uh success with marketing different things mm -hmm. and then they put a lot of research into it they send out the offer doesn't work at all. They switch back to like just a page full of testimonials and then it starts working like gangbusters. So the reality is the people who are successful don't necessarily know more. They just know to try more things. And that's why like Amazon, I think they're doing like well over like 100 plus different split tests all the time. So it's always like- uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's always, um, I mean, this is true with a lot of, we're gonna get off on like a huge tangent no, here. No, whatever, dude, let's Coach's keep going, Corner. just do it. But like, you know, a lot of stuff is like that where you don't know what's gonna work at first. And so you have to have like, we try page A and page B, and then you can have like a little uh, percentage of which one works better. And I think that's one of the things at the gym we do pretty well too is, we don't, we don't try to force square pegs and round holes. We're not like a barbell gym. We're not a sandbag gym. We're not a kettlebell gym. We're not a gymnastics rope climbing gym. So we have like a lot of different tools. And the reality is like, it's not going to work the same for everybody. So that's exactly what I was saying is it's like in the same way that Amazon is going to run like a hundred different marketing pages or try a hundred different things all at once. And then just kind of go with what works. It's like, you should always have, the, I was about to say, like bring it back to coaching. It's like, you know, some of my clients think it's funny where they're like, I want to learn how to back squat. Like, should I back squat? And I'm like, maybe. And they're like, what kind of answer is that? I'm like, I don't know. It might, it might F you up, dude. Like, I don't, we're going to find out. There are a lot of ways to get strong legs. Like we yeah. can use a sandbag. We use a kettlebell. We got like, the sleds over here. I stopped back squatting a long time ago and 
I'm pretty glad I did. And you know what's interesting is I think that's because your hip capsules are attached to your shoulders and you're six foot four. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, that's exactly it. It's like I've had some big squats in my life and done some really cool stuff. And then you get to a point where you're like, oh, well, I've done that and I can keep doing it. Like I now have that experience under my belt. But, you know, was I doing something? It's like that's it's just like training wisdom and bodily wisdom. It's like, is that should I continue to do that thing? Like, would I recommend this to a client? And if, if not, then why would I do it to myself if it's not the best thing for me? And, you know, and it's like, does what I want to do square up with what I should do physically? And then what are my goals long term? It's like, you when know, you try to have like a general answer for, that applies to everybody with training, with nutrition, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like as soon as you get married to one idea, <clears throat> you're going to try to force that idea onto everybody. But the reality is like, the, I, I mean, look, you and I have probably trained like thousands of people at this point. So the reality is there are people who come in here the only kind of squat they should do is with like a sandbag. And maybe they need their heels elevated because everybody's got a different amount of mileage. There are so many ways to get your legs strong, so many ways to get your core strong. And I think one of the advantages, you know, you got 10 years experience, Victoria's got 10 years experience, um, is the coaches have like really extensive toolboxes. Mm -hmm, so yeah. regardless of where someone is, we're like, yeah, there's definitely a safe way for you to get stronger, to get more mobile, to improve your power, right? So it might not be appropriate for someone to jump up onto a box, but it's probably great for them to throw a medicine ball as hard as they can at the wall. So there's always like, there's always a way to have a little success. And it reminds me of water. Water always takes the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And so I think we do a good job as coaches selecting like where to push and where to like, pull back well uh, i mean like what's the, there's an old phrase god it's so totally good i i don't remember it all, i don't remember how it goes but it's like all things in the end are completed you know eventually it's the idea is eventually you get where you need to go by a path that maybe you all didn't roads lead to rome sure yeah you eventually yeah. get to where you need to go and so it's like the river a river is is an exact manifestation manifestation of like the thing where it's like how people think success looks and it's just a line it's like how it really looks and it's just a wavy line it's like the river is going to get from here you know down the valley but it might snake and your fitness is going to be the same way you might start back squatting and then you end up going to a different type of thing and you go to a different type of squatting and you go to a different type of thing it's like you know we were talking earlier about you know you know people who are so sure about whatever the answer is it's like do you really want to be that positive you know How's that going to leave most of your clients long term if you're just so sure that you're trying to force this one idea on Well, them? the reason people do that is so they can have like an identity that's built around an ideology. And it's also, it also has to do with trying to differentiate yourself from the other coaches. And then just to use a nutrition example, part of it is the, the customer or the client is like, uh, you know, enough. Enough with your explanation, Dr. Science. Just tell me how many almonds I should eat and when I should eat them. And that like the, the reality is the reality is like people want like just like give me a meal plan. And I'm like, you know, uh, like almonds might be like totally toxic for you. I was about or, to say. Or they could be like a healthy protein packed snack. And like peanuts are the perfect example because there's like such a huge spectrum where they're like some people are like, ah, you know, they're actually classified as legumes and you should never have legumes. And then if is you're, that true? Yeah. And then if you're like and then if you're actually allergic, your throat will close up and you will you will like die. In is a, a very is short a peanut amount of time. more of a legume or is it more of a nut? It, it's a legume. So can a person who's allergic to peanuts not eat other legumes? Not necessarily. It's like Interesting. you could be uh, allergic, allergic to peanuts, but, peanut, not, walnuts. but not almonds or something like oh, that. Or, okay. But I think almonds are technically nuts, not legumes. Anyway, this is not a nutrition lecture that we're trying to do. The, the point we're trying to make <laughs> is that um, it's more difficult to figure out what the correct thing to do is, but it's worth the time because you, you shouldn't there's no such thing as like a one size fits all. And believe me, I have looked because that would be by far the easiest thing to sell ever. And <laughs> the only one size fits all I can think of is that moving is better than not moving. Like that's the only sure, that's the only positive answer you can give somebody is that doing something, 
will almost always be better than doing nothing. Notice how you said almost? I, well, some, exactly. some things will like totally break you. Well, sure, but if you have a, but what I mean by that is if you have a client who is deconditioned to the point where just doing this is something, but walking would be too much. It's like they're still doing a thing over no thing. So that is the only thing I would be sure about is that to right. do with something is better than to do nothing. Well, and that's it's, more about like courage than anything else, like mm -hmm. the courage to like just keep trying something. And I think that's where probably a lot of people are stuck right now is like the inertia. So there's a phrase I like, which is especially for anyone who's not a professional athlete is progress in any direction is progress in every direction. Mm -hmm. So once you break the inertia, like you can always make a U-turn later, but you know, like uh, what did Hippocrates say? If you feel bad, go for a walk. If you still feel bad, go for another walk. Like well, there's some stuff that's just well, and some tried people, and true. Some people feel like they get so far down a fitness road that they can't turn around. Like, like the, the, especially if you get your identity tied to like your performance so, of like a magic exercise. So we'll take Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall was like the first person to really, <laughs> really deadlift over a thousand pounds. Yeah. But then after he did it, a bunch of people did it. Now nobody cares, and he destroyed himself to get there. Oh, yeah. And it's like. You know, it's, it, now thankfully he had the wherewithal or the like confidence in himself or whatever it is to turn that ship around and, mm -hmm. you know, go in another direction that's hopefully more healthy for him. But it's like, you know, when people get too married, like they, they, they tie their ego into like, oh, I'm a kettlebell trainer or I'm like a barbell trainer or I'm a just this or a just that. It's like you are limiting not just yourself, but your ability to then help other people by having your identity wrapped up in the tools you use as opposed to like having like the very specific tool you use as opposed to like having a really large toolbox that you draw whatever you need from to help people with whatever the goal that they're trying to reach is. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a, like a, a shocking uh, percentage of the population who is really attached to how, how much they weigh and how much they can lift in like a very artificial way. Like I really want to improve my squat or I want to weigh less pounds. And it's, it's so funny to me because it's like, well, why do you want to weigh less pounds? And they're like, well, I'd just be happier at like, you sure. know, I mean, the only caveat to that is if, 130. I mean, the only caveat to that is if losing a certain amount of weight is like necessary for your health. Yeah, you but, know what I mean? But, but, but that's even, like, that's like an outsider. That's but, like, an, but even uh, then it's kind of like Goodhart's law where as soon as the measure becomes the target, it's no longer a good measure. Sure. Well, right. I've, t I've told that to you. As soon as I lost a bunch of weight, I got down to a certain body weight, and then I was like, I don't really care about this anymore. But it's usually because of some story about that body weight, mm -hmm. like especially mm -hmm. for women. Like, um, you know, for a woman, I don't know what heavy is, like 190 or something like I mean, it that. Depends on depends how depends how tall you are too, you know, and how depend, strong you I mean, are. depends on how strong the but people like, you associate with are. But it's like, okay, they're like, I just want to weigh less. I'm like, why don't you just measure in kilograms so the number is smaller? And if you like want to lift more weight, just measure in grams so the number is bigger. Like it has like so little bearing on how you actually function and what you're able to do. And I think that's like probably our core message here, right? Is that we help people gain the athletic ability to do whatever they want outside of here without having to be afraid. And that's gonna have way more long-term intrinsic value than chasing a number that ultimately won't satisfy them anyway. Because you, there's always like, oh, well now I can lift 225. Well now I wanna lift 235. Or now well, do, I weigh do you 120. Think, do you now think I a good way to think about it is we try to help people dissolve like the connection, or oh, sorry, let me change that. We try to help people remove like their ego, you know, or their attachment to a certain thing. You know what I mean? I want to come in, I want to back squat. I think, let's, let's get you away from that. I think as an, as like a, you have to back squat. Yeah. I mean, look, so much of what I have done and you have done is to get people out of this obligation to do something a certain way and get them into like the intrinsic joy of movement. And the intrinsic joy of movement is really difficult if you are physically hurt or physically weak. So like True. from like a very simple standpoint, I want someone to be able to jump and bounce and not have to like be afraid when they land that they're going to hurt their foot or their knee or whatever. And like, you know, in Andre's class that I took today, um, we did carries and guys and girls both are just picking up heavy ass sandbags. So, you know, some of it is just 
It's just very like practical skills that makes your ability to interface with your environment a lot easier. You know, we teach people how to roll. So, you know, now you're not as afraid of falling. So it's more about how the abilities allow you to interact with your environment rather than like a specific number or a specific something. I think I take for granted the idea, something you just said, which is you, we have men and women just walking over to our sandbag pile and just picking up heavy ass sandbags and taking off and then crawling on the floor and rolling around. And I'm like, I think I'm at a point where I have to remind myself not to take the fact we do those things and we have people who are so confident, competent and confident. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that that's just normal and you go to other gyms and people are like, what? Like yeah. you do this? And I'm like, to me, it just seems like, why would you do anything else? Why would you, <laughs> why would you like limit yourself to bop, 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 all the time when you have like, fitness can be anything. And, but you're like putting yourself in a box that's tied, that you tie to like other people's approval. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And every, every fitness system ever is kind of like a religion because it's sort of <laughs> like, thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? <laughs> that's like the first thing in every like holy book in every training. Somebody, has, somebody like, has a little statue of like uh, Ronnie Coleman that they go like burn incense <laughs> at the feet of every morning. Like, <laughs> let thy weights be light. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, but, but the reality is like how you interact with your environment is the best indicator of your physical freedom. And that has totally. way more bearing on your life than like cherry picking some like special movements like the bench press. And look, bench press is fine. We do floor presses in here with sandbag all the time. Hollow floor press, I'm all about it. Nothing wrong with pushing in this plane sometimes, but like if your whole life is about like driving up one of those things, it's not fitness anymore. It's like a fetish, right? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, a, like, it's just I'm a specific into, goal. Like, I don't want to kink shame anybody. Like if you want to like bench press double your body weight, I'm all about it. Just like, imagine I somebody walking to, up to bars. I, I, I used to, I used to care so much if I could deadlift triple body weight. And then when I did, I was finally complete inside and then I was happy forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what happened. I was but like, was it not satisfying for a moment? Yeah, of course. Like, I think it's definitely about the journey and I think it's good to have goals, but like it's when, when the way you measure like becomes the target, it, it's like not useful anymore. You're, you're almost just trapping yourself. So, and I noticed in my own training that um, monkey see, monkey do. So I went to all these seminars and people were like, this is good, this is good, this is good. And I was like, well, I'll just try to be the absolute best of those because I was trying to be like super alpha strong guy. Yeah. And then of course, the way I trained my clients was very similar. But then I just had all these like revelations along the way where I was like, you know, a lot of the fitness professionals and personal trainers train for years and years, train clients for years and years, and they still can't dance or fight. And I'm like, how, how is it that you can invest like 10 years of training and still move like a constipated robot? Why are you I'm talking at, about me like this? I'm looking at like, well, I'm looking at like ballet dancers and I know that's like a, a specific thing. I'm looking at Afri African dancers and I'm like, wow, these guys are way lighter on their feet. So I started adding in some of these components from these different ideas and like, I, I don't even really have an ideology except do something that's fun and that makes life easier for you. Like there's no, like, what I else mean, can you say? I would that? say that that is one of my core philosophies for training is it's like, does it make the rest of your life easier? If not, or does it enhance the rest of your life? If it does right. not, then why the fuck are you doing it? You know what I mean? And, and again, it goes back to what did we used totally. to say? You say to a client, you know, what do you do for exercise? You're doing a little intro assessment. And they're like, well, I run. It's like, I always just go right to, do you like running? And the amount of yeah. people are like, I fucking hate running. And I'm like, yeah. you should stop doing it. You know what I mean? If you don't like it and it doesn't feel good, why are you doing it, man? Well, because I feel like I have to. Okay, well, let's, let's disabuse you of that. Let's, well, okay, let's, so, let's detach ourselves you know, from that like feeling like I have to do this thing. That was like you know the what I mean? main thing that Anders and I talked about the other day when we did our like truth about fitness thing is like this idea that you have to do certain things. And the only, like we know so little for sure about what really improves longevity. We do, we do know that um, social bonds uh, don't eat too much 
and uh, hope you have good genetics. Our li <laughs> we, 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 like, we know that for sure, and we also know that uh, fat people rarely get old. They, they die before they get old, and um, there's a lot of, I mean, there are so many different, like, studies you could cherry pick and all that, but the reality is, like, you just don't see any, like, obese 90-year-olds. Like, it doesn't happen. You see 90-year-olds smoking cigarettes, but you don't see obese 90-year-olds. That's the craziest thing ever to me, when you see somebody who's 90 and they're smoking cigarettes, and it's like, but it's you like, actually shouldn't even stop. Just keep going well, at that point. And, you know, it, it might actually be medicinal for their particular genetics. I mean, Chinese medicine is more of, like, on adjusting the balance of hot, cold, damp, and dry. And so a person who is naturally very like damp heat, and we're not like, we're probably going pretty off topic already, but that's what right. What are you talking about, man? Like, we're just doing it. They might do better like smoking a little tobacco, but if they were to like eat too much food, it might kill them like 40 years I earlier. I think we, we should know. differentiate between somebody who smokes tobacco and somebody who smokes cigarettes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, those things, I believe, I believe that there is a difference between a person who smokes well, tobacco once in a while of course there's a difference but it's it's like there's no guarantee that you will live longer or shorter everything is like the sum mm -hmm. of all of the things that you're doing and the reality plus chance yeah well but that but that's part of the equation right? yeah it's like but i mean look the, your social bonds like whether you have friends that you interact with a lot probably whether you go for walks or not although like some people live really old in a wheelchair so like well, it's the, true. the main I just... thing for sure i know is if you eat too much and you get fat you won't live a long time like and and that you don't even need a study there's just nobody fat left in the like community of the old i um if you're going for longevity in the first place because look if you want to be a sumo wrestler yeah, offensive not... lineman well we're not talking more power to we're, you. We're, but see i think i think <laughs> we're getting into an area where we should, it, to me it goes without saying, and I'm sure to you it goes without saying, it's like people deserve to still be, to, to like be allowed to live and be themselves. You know what I mean? And if yourself is a person who's very overweight, I, I want to reiterate, like that person should never be like, I don't believe in like shaming a person who's, who's very overweight or like, making them feel bad for who they are. There shouldn't be any shame. It's just you got to accept the Real, possible ex consequences. Well, accept, so that's what I mean. So then, but then I deviate and say, but here are the consequences of the behaviors that you're engaging with I mean, long I, term. Like I eat gluten and frankly, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care gluten. if it shaves like three years off my life. I, yeah, man. Like, have you ever had pasta? <laughs> so tasty. <laughs> like, I, I, I think there's no shame in eating. Yeah. Alcohol gluten. hurts your liver. I, I really like bourbon. It, it depends. <laughs> it depends how much. That's all there is to it. Like, it's That's why a, I love the whole, like, wine's degree. good for your heart, so I'm going to have a bottle every night. Well, I love Cosmopolitan magazine because it's just utter trash, but it's, all, it's just like a recycling of, like, why chocolate is actually good for you, why wine is actually Bro, good for it's you. Like, that's like men's health, where it's, it's like... total pandering. It's like abs, yeah. biceps, some fitness model, yeah. something about your wiener, we, and then, like... <laughs> And then, I don't know, something about clothes that you don't need. We, we take something that you already really want to believe and we give you like permission. We're like, hey, actually that thing is okay for you. <laughs> yeah, dude. But, but that's just it. It's like you and I, I feel like a lot of times what has to happen, and it's like a slow process. We don't just like when someone comes in the door, like yell at them, everything you know is wrong. No way, man. No, it's like... No way, I stopped try, doing that try. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> it's like the one negative Yelp review. I went in and he yelled at me. so mean. I told him I liked running. He told me I was a stupid head. Well, I think running is like actually really fun. And oh, you, no, I, I agree. If you can run, it's, it's super empowering. Like, yeah. You know, hopefully you never have to like run away from anything. Well, that's the old joke. If you get the t-shirt that says, if you see me running, you should also start running like i mean there's a lot i of did run to... after an ice cream truck like a few weeks ago <laughs> not an exaggeration at all baby in arms <laughs> i heard it go by i had to scramble up a dot like a few dollars and i picked her up and i was <laughs> like and she's like she's a baby she's learning how to hold on and she figured it out and like she's that. she's absorbing this information too <laughs> Daddy runs after ice cream trucks. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like, I can be sure that Dad will run at least 100 yards yeah. to catch an ice cream Probably truck. Probably faster than you've ever run. With a, 
with a baby, there's a certain level of apprehension the whole time. Like it's good to know your motivation. Like you probably run away from like a bear faster, but I bet you run like almost as fast towards ice cream. Mm, 100%, 100%. <laughs> anyway, back to fitness. <laughs> How do we come back to fitness after that? I don't even know what we're doing we'll do, anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say, I'll, I'll talk about my philosophy just for a minute. <laughs> okay. My philosophy is that, is, but it's, it's, I would say it's 95% in line with yours, and, and, and that extra 5% is just whatever we haven't talked about yet. You know what I mean? Mm. Where it's like, and it your, your fitness should be like, do no harm, you mm. know, enhance the activities you enjoy engaging in in the rest of your life, and then enjoy doing it. That's it. Like, we've had clients who have come in here and they're doing everything great and they're seeing progress, but they just don't like it here. And you know what we do? You should go somewhere where you really enjoy it. And it's like, yeah, you, gotta you have should, fun with you should you have fun. Well, that's, and that's a critical aspect. Too many people engage in activities that, they, that are probably not as good for them as they could be and they also don't like doing. So we try to create an environment and a community where people want to be there. It enhances the rest of their life. And yeah, if they, have, if they have nicer calves afterward, then like that's, that's just a fringe benefit. I think we do a good job making it feel a little bit more like recess and a little bit like boot camp. That's really, that's really funny. Do you remember the show Recess? Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah. A little cartoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's like, I like the idea of calling it a recess. It's like if you have a noon class and people are taking the time that they could be going to get like, I mean, we live in Southern California. People could go to the beach tacos. every day. You go get tacos and go sit by the beach, but they yeah. choose to come see us and like, get a workout in it's like well it's fun and that it has to be like intrinsically enjoyable and if it's not intrinsically enjoyable if you're just doing it for like the gains whatever that means like fat loss or muscle gain it's going to feel like you're paying a toll to get somewhere mm -hmm. and if you make it all about the destination it's ultimately not going to satisfy you that much anyway right totally. so you have to like you know i i think about an exercise program or a fitness program or a training program i don't even know what to call it but it has to be something that you like build into your lifestyle. It can't be just like a means to an end because like I've seen those people like, you know, you go on like a crash diet, you exercise really hard. You, you probably do lose some weight because if you reduce your calories and you increase your um, movement. movement, you're definitely going to mm -hmm. uh, drop weight. But if it's just about that, it's not going to be something that lasts for 10 years. And you, you've been here 10 years, I've been here uh, I guess 12 years, Victoria's been here 10 years, oh, like yeah. um, a lot of our members have been here since day one. And we like, have some real OGs. The, yeah. the reason for that is because like you want to keep coming back. And also, we, we don't like try to keep people here who don't want to be here either. Well, like, I, think, I, think, I think a difference between yourself and between us is like you worked at multiple different places before you opened Ambition and then you've just mm -hmm. been here for basically since then on top of just doing your other things like uh, remotely or online. For myself, you know that I, in addition to working here, I've had other training jobs outside of Ambition on top of working here. And I will say one thing that never ceases to amaze me, and I hope that I really don't become desensitized to it because that would be sad, is the, is the absolutely toxic nature of so much of the fitness industry with respect not to the people trying to get fit, but to the people engaging and delivering the knowledge and the fitness. The amount of other training facilities I've been involved in and, and seen and worked at where the trainers are nothing more than like backbiting, single-minded snake oil salesmen is, it sucks because they, even if they really believe in what they're selling, they're, they, are, they are tearing down, like I've said this to a lot of coaches, there's more people for you to train within three miles of your house than you have the ability to train. So don't ever complain that there's not enough clients. You're just not reaching them and that's okay. But it's like when you start to really look at it that way and you realize that like you can make a big impact on a lot of people's lives if you just like, there's a, I don't tear down other trainers anymore. Mm -hmm. Like unless like, I don't know, they're overtly. Unless everybody's doing it. Well, well, well unless they're cool. like overtly toxic, unless they're overtly toxic or I something like that. It, but it's, it's like a difference between like, calling out a behavior that is um, like maybe uh, reckless versus like calling out the person. And I think the reason you see that in other facilities is because there's not like, it, it's, it's bottom line, it's like you're either coming from a place of fear or you're coming from a place of love. 
and abundance, right? If I think a lot of trainers come from fear. Of like fear and scarcity, like, oh, he like took my client. Like, it's, Did he really it, take your client? No, or? it's it's like people who are afraid that someone's going to take their girlfriend all the time. The pro, the only reason you feel afraid someone's going to take your girlfriend is you don't treat her well, or you're not confident in yourself. Bottom line, right? Uh, absolutely. Like, I, <laughs> well, okay. So a good example is I worked at a I worked at a training facility. You know this, where it was like I, for lack of a better term, it was like a fat camp. Like people went and lived at this facility, and all their meals and their workouts, everything was there and you were just like, your, my job was to be like, Captain Positive and blah, blah, blah. And I used to have real conversations. I got, I think the people got more out of like our weekly walks on the beach where I would just single out a client and we would like talk about life and we would talk about why they were losing weight and like what their end goal was and how they were feeling and like what they really wanted to get done. And like helping these people work on the micro conversations they were having internally mm did more for them than like the cardio boxing class that we would do like before lunch, you know? And I totally know. I, and, and, well, and, but so with that in mind, it's like, did I work hard? Yes. Do I think I made a positive impact on some people's lives? I do believe that. But at the end of the day, it was just another job where you had coaches who were like, no, we like do blood type eating and, and, and we eat quinoa every day with chicken and it's just you know what i mean it's, it's like just, it's like literally just the desire to differentiate yourself from everybody else that's that's why we do that i mean that's why the most uh my, my funniest thing is like that's why the most popular cave painting is a left hand stencil like everybody yeah, that, everybody yeah. wants to leave their mark but not everybody really has anything important to say so they just like are trying to differentiate themselves i think that that's why i don't do more fitness posting on facebook because it's like what can i say that hasn't already been said by tons of trainers. Besides, you should do what makes you feel good. I mean, you know me, dude. I was making tons of dough doing social media, and then I just quit cold turkey because yeah, I was that's wild. Yeah, I know. everyone's like texting you. Is Max alive? Is Max okay? Well, like it's it's good. I mean, I was like in the same kind of thing. I was like a, I was getting so much positive attention for being this guy, and I was like, but that's not even like really me. I'm just like really good at tricking everyone, and I'm just showing everybody like. I don't think you were, I would not say you were tricking people well, because at the time it's who you were. It's who you were. Right, right. So I'm getting all this positive attention for that. And it's kind of like the die before you die thing. In order to like really find yourself, I think you have to be willing to like let go of what you were. Mm -hmm. It's like Lao Tzu, um, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. And so totally. like now when I think about social media, I mean, there, there are like, I could go on about this for like hours because it's a very small screen. It's like very frantic eye movement, and it's specifically curated to get you to spend as much time there as possible. And when I think about posting on social media, I only think about what action I want them to take afterward. Uh -huh. And the reality is, like, pretty much every post I put out should be, put your phone down and go outside. You're put your phone down and go me. outside. Put your phone down and go outside. Like, you're not gonna like get anywhere by fighting people, though. You're you're a better person than me. A lot of my <laughs> posts on Facebook are just shit posting, riling people up, and then walking away from my phone. Well, that's because <laughs> that's because you don't believe you can get love, so you're just gonna try to get attention, <laughs> right? And, and but that's what everybody does. Like that's what everybody's doing when they're posting online. They're like they're just like putting something out there to provoke a response. Totally. Because the worst thing is to feel isolated. So, you know, everybody wants love. If they don't think they can get love, then they will try to get power. And if they don't think they can get power, then they will just settle for attention. And that's why people like whine and complain. It's not like a very powerful thing to do. Why are you talking it about doesn't, Tumblr like this, it, Max? It doesn't do any good. I don't even know what that is. You don't is. even know. Listen, don't, <laughs> don't look it up. It's a cesspool. But, but like, I mean, if you think about it, like, is this person trying to get love, power, or attention? Or is this person trying to like share something useful and get you into a better action? And so... You know, I don't think, I don't think the way people live right now is very healthy, like at all. Do you love your clients? Yeah, of course I do. I, no, but I mean, like, do you tell them that? I, I actually tell a lot of people I love them. Like, I tell you I love you. I, I love you too. Tell dude. the coaches I love them, and uh, I used to like withhold that word even. Like, I used to not tell people I love them, much mm. to the chagrin of my former girlfriends. I would be like, I would like put like a lot of weight and distance on that word and like the reality is like if you are open with love it doesn't mean that you have like an obligation to that person but 
you know, I mean, how many stories have you heard where someone like doesn't tell someone how they really feel about them and then they like die or something like that? And I don't want to be one of those people who's like holding back what I really feel just because I'm afraid people are going to like make fun of me for being mm -hmm. like vulnerable and soft. But well, I mean, but here's but I, I asked that because it's like that was a big change for me. You remember when Heather went through her work incident and like yeah. she, you know, when when she almost died, it's like that changed my perspective on like. I'm gonna be nicer to people. Like you remember I, that I. Remember I that. You remember you I started went, like giving me compliments instead of saying like mean things. I, and so that was well. That was my mission. I was like, I, I realized how to handle that a first. lot of men <laughs> communicate by like it, we our, make jokes. our love. Our love language between yeah. men is to like bust each other's balls. Yeah, like. But at nice, some nice point, calves, you fairy. Yeah, but at some point, it's like, it's like 80-20 insults to compliments, and I'm like, no, I'd rather these are my friends. These, these five people sum up everything about me, and mm -hmm. I want everything about me to be positive, so I should start lifting them up as much as I can, because then it will lift me up. And it's like, that's why I say, like, do you tell your clients you love them? Like, how much positivity yeah, do you spread? Day one, like, when I first meet someone, hello, welcome to Ambition Athletics, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, wait, what? No, I don't, I don't actually do that. I, I wait until well, no, like halfway time, No, 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 that's, that's if, if I did an intro with somebody, if I did an intro with somebody, and they're like, mm, yeah, I'd like to do uh, three one-on-one -on -one sessions a week for the next two years, I'd be like, I, I love you. No, that's funny. <laughs> I love <Right>. you. <laughs> no, like, I mean, there's obviously, like, an appropriate thing, but... My love uh, language is when I get a new client, I automatically send them memes, and if they don't think it's funny, we actually just find them a new trainer. <laughs> Listen, we got to get along. I'm, We're going to spend a lot of time together. We got to get along. I'm, I'm old school. I still use words to communicate with people. No, I'm all, I'm all gifts. I'm all gifts. <laughs> the like, amount of times clients are like, can we switch to 9 a.m. tomorrow? And they just get a gift of somebody going like this. They get Wayne from Wayne's World going, excellent. Like, so if someone's like a little bit more old school, you can uh, hang with me and we'll use words to communicate. If you're more into like pictures, then Brian's your guy. Well, listen, you called, you called the fact that people would start communicating only in emojis <laughs> like years ten, ago. Ten years ago. You called it years ago that we would get to a point where we would communicate in like hieroglyphs again. And what have they done but expand I, the emoji I, I remember like writing repertoire. That. I was like, we're going to get back to hieroglyphs within like a couple of years and sure enough it's like most so that. so this is a good way to bring it back to fitness again yeah. which is like how do we communicate with our clients you know how do we communicate our message and how do we show them like how do we show them that like besides just offering good training how do we communicate that message to them that like what we are here to sincerely better your life as opposed to enriching our own i mean i think like the way that we do classes here is really collaborative and instructive rather than like you know uh get on this uh, machine and i will yell motivational cliche cliches at you until you get your heart rate up to 700 it's more like today we're going to learn this movement and you know here are some ways that you can change that movement here's why we're doing this movement and so i think it is more about um like teaching skills than like putting someone through a boot camp thing. Well, I believe that I actually said in one of the Instagram, one of the Instagram TV videos I put out a few months ago, mm. that when we reopen the gym, our emphasis, it's like, listen, man, I know you're gonna get strong. I know you're gonna move better. I know you're gonna feel better. That's all like given, like that's gonna happen. Guaranteed. I think I'm pretty sure if I'd have to go check, up. if I, I'd have to go listen, which yeah. I won't. Um, I'd have to go listen, but it's like, I'm pretty sure I said in one of the videos, our main, shut up, our main goal is going to be communica communication, collaboration, and community. Yeah. Like, those were going to be the goals. And, it, and so, like, it's funny that you just said you brought up collaboration because one of our clients actually sent a really nice email because she took class and I was here and you were here and Anders was teaching class and it was a nice full class and it was a really fun time. And she just commented that, like, you're talking to people and having a good time, Anders is coaching people, and even though I was doing my own thing, I would stop what I was doing to go, oh, no, no, let me help you with that. Oh, let's try this. And she just commented that she'd never been to a gym where coaches would literally stop whatever they were doing to come and assist another coach that, in a way that like, doesn't directly benefit them just because it's the right thing to do. I mean, I think, I think part of I totally agree with you. I think part of it is like, you know, <clears throat> this is a big part of our life. This isn't just a job. This isn't just something where I'm like, oh, I'm hoping to get like, 
some money out of this and like have, have people like Listen, lunge I, I know. up and down <laughs> the hall. Like this is, this is our career. This is our family here. Like we're looking out for each other. And you know, that's, I guess well, that's I mean, the it, bottom line. Well, like, I mean, it's like, I had a person call me up the other day who's like, Hey, I heard about you. I'd like to learn more about training. And I'm like, you know what? You should really talk to Anders. He's a great coach. And they're yeah. like, really? And I'm like, you should really talk to Anders. He'll be able to help you a lot. And they were like, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And now he's going to do an intro with them and he's going to get them rolling. And it's like, people have never experienced a gym where it's like, no, no, no. You know what? It wouldn't be best if you worked with me. It would be best if you worked with this coach. Well, and I think that has to do with having the like confidence within yourself to recognize where your strengths and weaknesses are. And, you know, when I ask you guys stuff like that, you, Anders, Holly, Victoria are very like open mm -hmm. about like, I think these are what I'm strong at. I think these are the areas that I could improve at. And I think you know, just comes back to the like love and abundance mindset instead of like a scarcity fear mindset mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, I got to just, I got to take everybody. It's like, no, let's find the right match for you. Well, that goes back to the, there's more clients for us to train in a three mile radius than we have the ability to train. And with more. that in mind, I can look at a new person and say, you know what? You would really work well with Victoria or you would work well with this person. And it's about like, right. it's, I don't know, it's about creating it, there's no such thing a as healthy like, atmosphere. There's no maybe? such thing as a best trainer. Like what? That, that's like I mean I'm obviously like way better than. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say I'm obviously like way better than you. But I like, was there's going no. to say that and then I stopped myself. That's okay. Because that's okay. because the reality is like it, it's always the same uh, truth for that is the same thing for fitness in general. For who? Like there are people that you coach way better than I ever would. And there are people who want to learn something different and have it presented them in a different way. And I would be I want you much to know, better coaching them. I want you to know, I copy and paste maxshank.com to your, like I have the hyperlink uh -huh. saved on my computer to your like product list. Uh -huh. And I copy and paste it into like every gym fitness group I can. Whenever I see somebody post like, hey, like what workout programs do you like? I always just copy and paste it into there whenever I see it. Well, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I Anytime worked, I, see I worked it. really hard on this. Well, but it's like, why <laughs> wouldn't I do that? Like, why not, would, if I, I have a friend, I have a, a brand, option. I have a friend who makes knives, makes if, amazing knives. If you have a better option, you should share that one. But it's like, yeah, why wouldn't I share my friend's knives? Why, why wouldn't I lift up the people around me? A good example is we have this whole redone building around us, mm -hmm. you know, awesome. like they spent $2 million redoing this building. And, you know, we have the people next door. And the first time I came and got them and said, I'd like to offer a discount to all you and your people. And I'd love to be able to refer people to you. And they were like, yeah. And it's like, I go down to the physical therapy place and I say, I'd like to refer people to you. And I'd really like it if you referred them to us. Yeah. And I talked to people we've known for years, but it's like people are so desperate for a community and positive like environments that when you just offer them like the smallest bit of like, Hey, let's work together. I would like to support you there. It's like, groundbreaking. Well, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that and agree with you completely. Community is um, priceless. It's also one of those things that actually helps you live a long time. Yeah. And, well, and, that goes back to the and, blue zones you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, but <laughs> the point I want to make is um, when you are an adult, life, life can be really, really, really lame. It's and like, lonely. It, it's, it's horrible. Like, I remember, like, so I hated school, right? And I still do. And I think it's probably the worst 12 year industry. Okay, time out. This is, too, we're going to just, no, 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 no that's, no, that's like, real heavy. We're, we're not going down that road. So I'll just start talking louder then. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, okay, so like, at least you got PE class and maybe you do like pottery or wood shop or something like that. I loved, I loved ceramics. <laughs> what? Brian, me and Patrick Brian's Swayze married, would, by the way, me Brian's and Patrick married. Swayze would make uh, pottery together. Is that not the same thing? Is that not? Am I getting it wrong? Was it Patrick Swayze? Yeah, and Ghost. And Ghost. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want anyway, to make sure I like be, my... being an adult can suck really bad. <laughs> like people say, like oh, adult situations, but an adult situation is like waiting on hold with customer service. Yeah, that's it's not, not what like... I think of when I think of adult situation. <laughs> well, but it's like okay, once you become an adult, like unless you join like a a co-ed softball league or something like that, or are one of the few like phenomenal people who are like playing beach beach volleyball every morning like you don't really have like where do you go i want to, to have like movement and fun at the same time like there just aren't that many good choices that's why it looks like a jw tumbles in here or something <laughs> like that which is what you know like the little gymnast like yeah. half gymnastics for like five-year-old birthday yeah. parties 
I remember when I was a kid and I heard that there was a party at JW Tumbles, I got so excited. <laughs> that was like my favorite thing. Instead of your parents taking you to the kids mini gambling den of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's like, but that's, that's my point is if there's a, a physical place where people can go, that's uh, also conducive to healthy, move, healthy movement where people can climb on things and carry stuff and wrestle around and push sleds and it's active, but it's also just like kind of fun and hanging out. Well, it's like, like it's what where, we're conditioned. Where do, where do adults go anyway? Well, it's about undoing some of the conditioning that we've had placed upon us our entire lives. A great example is the amount of clients where I'm like, hey, I want you to take this medicine ball. I want you to throw it. I want you to fucking put it through the wall and people are like and I'm like no I know you're taught never to throw things inside I want you to take this ball <laughs> and I want you to throw it as goddamn hard as you can against that wall and you see people like take this yoke off of like how they're supposed to behave in a gym and like what they're supposed to do and it's like no man you're here to like better yourself if like, we start talking about how many instincts people have to repress just to be a functional adult this <laughs> little interview here is going to go until 11 p.m. tonight and it's like noon right now like there's just like it, it's being an adult can be really sad like I I'm I'm people think I'm a little bit eccentric I can't imagine why that is Max I want but, you to know <laughs> I don't think that at all and it's here's the thing I don't think you're eccentric because I've known you so long that I'm just like no it's, that's it's just how I am yeah it's just Max but like I I don't know I guess I just have this like ability to like not play in the games that don't look fun to me. Like, I don't really care if people like me or what they think at this point because I do know that the way adults live most of the time is, like, not very healthy. I'm going to ask you a heavy question. Ask. If you were dropped into a society where everyone does the things that you think people should be doing now, would you go against the grain and try to create more order? Um... If there was like, no social pressures, if there was no need I, to be well, a certain I'm not, way. I'm not saying like no social pressures. But I'm saying would like, you, like people like, have an overload of social pressures on them now and you try to help them just shake off some of that to be freer. I mean, I think, if some, you were social into the pressures, I think some social pressures are probably good for a society. Like, like I, don't, I don't think like cannibalism is like not a good idea probably. Depends even if you're stuck probably, in the mountains. Even though it's probably the most nutritious and bioavailable. Like I just don't think it's like healthy for the society. I would eat you. Thanks, buddy. No problem, dude. <laughs> How are we gonna Do you want to cut that? How are we gonna, <laughs> I would eat you. Dig our, <laughs> how are we going to dig ourselves out of this hole? I mean, like, no, I think... Um, well, we were talking about nutrition, okay? No, no, no. We were talking about society and repressing certain instincts. Like, I don't think it needs to be, like, uh, Pompeii or Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> or something like that. But I also think there's, like, uh, I don't know, like... I don't want to say there's a middle ground because usually whoever says that gets killed, <laughs> <laughs> like historically speaking. Uh, but, but I mean, yeah, no, I don't think I am like rebellious just to rebel because I'm I'm really comfortable in my own skin. Your like, rebe if your a, rebellion if a party is, is fun. I stay, and if a party is not fun, I leave. But I don't try to change. The you party. did that at a party I had one time where you came up and you said, "Happy birthday." I'm thankful I'm here, but there's some people here I just don't want to hang out with. And I was like, you know what? I totally respect that. I remember that. And I was I offered you. to take you out for lunch or something like that. Yeah, and I was like, you and know what, like, dude? You don't have to do that. Scene. That's like, okay. I love you. This party is like not my bag. I'm out. And I <laughs> respect that honesty so much. That goes back to like when we start, when, when the first time you, we, we read Extreme Ownership, mm -hmm. and it was like, you get into like the whole like practicing honesty with each other. It's like when the gym went through like its first real big change mm -hmm. and like, <clears throat> and you came to me one day and you were like, do you think I'm like this, this, and this? And I told you, I was like, I think you're this, but I don't think any of those other things. And I yeah. could see in your face, there was like a second. It was just a second of yeah. like, you really think that? But like, okay, yeah. I appreciate that you just told me what you really think. And it's like, is this the best thing ever? No, but were you honest and I appreciate it and everything else you said is really nice? Okay. And it's like, we both grew as friends from that because it's like, wow, Brian's really gonna tell me what he thinks. And I can, tr that was where like our trust went to like a new level where it's like, I can trust that Brian's not gonna like fuck with me and he's gonna tell me what he really thinks. And I can trust that I don't have to go to him to like learn everything to like reassure myself. And it's like, not that you're that type of person who needs reassurance, but like, you know, it becomes, it becomes like 
it, it, it it's just, good to have people around you who will shoot you straight. That's kind of like what I would say. There you go. Like, that, I, that's a good way to you put it. You <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be around people who are just like agreeing with everything you say because you don't have a I chance agree. to grow. <laughs> but uh, just like. What if I disagreed right there? I, that'd be fine. Like you're you're free to. I would want to know. No, but why. see, if you said I would need people who shoot you straight, and I was like, I disagree. It's like, am I shooting you straight or am I lying to you? Uh, if you had an actual opinion that was, um, you don't think it's good to be surrounded by people who shoot you straight, then that would be like a fundamental um, disagreement. Oh, Your that we life have. would be upside down if you were around people who just lied to you all the time. I think that's like probably a lot of people. I mean, that's a lot of society right now. People lie, just lying well, to themselves and each other. Yeah, in my opinion, because like we all want to be liked, and you know, um, often in history, it's worse to be exiled than to be killed. I mean, that's like just how emotional and social we are. So the last thing you want to do is be exiled from the society. That's why it's good to like kind of get a stable foundation without at least as much as you can, trying to like worry about what everyone thinks about you. Did you know there is a, it is not the oldest piece of like human evolution that we possess that like archeologists or historians possess, but one of the oldest pieces of human evolution relating to civilization that we possess is not like pottery or a weapon of some kind. It is a bone that was clearly Mended. Hmm. Oh, I know one of the about. one of the oldest pieces of civilizationary we took care history. Of the weak one. We took care of the person who hurt themselves. Whereas in the rest of the animal kingdom, kingdom, if you hurt your leg, you are fucked. Keep but, up, Buttercup. But it's like that just goes to show. Let's bring it like all the way full circle. We are doing something that humans are literally predicating our entire existence on, which is creating a community that supports each other and lifts each other up through every action that we have. As far as animals go, like that's basically all we're good at. Like we can walk a really long distance thanks to our vertical skeleton and we can communicate in a very specific way so we can hatch a plan mm -hmm. that will let us beat lions when in actuality, uh, lions would just like torch us every single time that's in true. a matchup. Like human being, that's what's so funny about fitness. I think about this sometimes is like, <laughs> it's like trying to put pearls on a pig because like physically speaking, humans are like very weak and fragile, like no armor, no claws, no yeah, poison the, stingers, that, like very low top speed. But we want to get like really Which athletic. is, yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's amazing <laughs> that we're so dominant because if a squirrel came running at me, I would, Definitely be like, ah, and like. Well, I mean, we're all like pretty darn domesticated compared to our um, oh, genetic God, material. Th just to say that out loud freaks me out. Is like, <laughs> what you didn't know? You're no, no, just kid. no, but just like You're using even more domesticated. I know, than but me. just I, I, I know. That's why it's a little existential when I think about it. You know. No, it's it's good. I mean, um, otherwise we wouldn't have survived this well. I mean, the fa <laughs> that's kind of another thing. Like when it comes back to nutrition, I'm like someone with your same DNA figured it out by cracking bones and sucking out the raw marrow. <laughs> like, like pretty much same DNA. Uh, you know, you can survive on very little. Now, whether or not you thrive or not, like there's probably, maybe they were not getting enough like vitamins and minerals like I, I don't know maybe yeah maybe maybe a, maybe a hundred percent I don't know it's like oh, listen we, we in sturdy. the past hundred years we've eliminated through most of the world like rickets that you get from just certain vitamin de deficiencies it's well, like it's, yeah it's so weird though like, like all of human history and just now we've eliminated certain things well what's weird is like we have way more countermeasures for specific illnesses but we don't necessarily live healthier overall right we, and that's kind of like our decadence is killing us well, it goes back to what I was saying. Like, what kills you uh, more than smoking is like overeating. You know, like that's not. I'm not trying to like advocate smoking, but even though it sounds that like a, that, so, that would be but, a hilarious <laughs> like, headline. Like Max Shank advocate smoking right. advocate smoking advocate Max Shank <laughs> says food is killing you. <laughs> like, yeah, too much of anything is like not not good. But um, I think we've you know, been doing too this much... for almost an hour, by the way. Yeah, I mean, and Which we, we, sh we, don't we have haven't to even made a point yet either. Have we not? I think we made a few points, actually. Okay, it depends if somebody takes the time to listen. There's going to be a lot, uh, yeah. There's, there, there's a lot some... more F-bombs than in Victoria's talk. Yeah, see, that's, so that's the other thing. <laughs> listen, if you're so going to... You, hey, at least now you know what you're going to get with this guy over yeah, here. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't, I'm not, like, 
I, I got to be better about that, but it's like, I don't, this is, I, I want to be who I am. Adults curse sometimes. Yeah, a well, curse but, word. A, well, but see, here's, actually, you know what's interesting is, I know a lot of trainers uh, who, like, cultivate an image about themselves and that, mm -hmm. like, they are a certain way. I'm like, you know what my image is? My image is Brian. And... That comes back to the straight shooting. It's like, it's like, I have all this knowledge I've accrued, and then along with it comes my personality, yeah. which is why all of my clients... I have those clients because I want those clients, not because I have to train those clients. You know what it's I mean? It's a really fortunate position to be in. God, yeah, yeah, man. I don't miss the days of living in a garage and and uh, <laughs> training every training. I everyone remember I had when to, you lived in a garage. Training everyone I had to. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, you were like doing the same negotiating I was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't afford fifty an hour. How about twenty-five? Oh, you can't afford that. How about a burrito? <laughs> it's like you owe me a burrito. Uh, but I mean, we do such a better job with the clients, and I think that's, um, I don't know if uh, the folks at home can tell just from this conversation, but we're not too formal around here, and it's, it's pretty relaxed, it's fun. The only thing I'm formal about is how much I care about the clients. I mean, I think that where we are, like firm at least, is if something is like dangerous, because we're not going to oh. like... We're not going to be like aggressive. Like I think one of the things that we're good about here is not overcoaching. Like if something is safe, we'll just let people practice it until it gets better. Why you got to bring up the time I tried to make somebody do swings for like 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Well, that was what I used to teach when I was teaching kettlebell certifications. Do you I miss would... that ever? Um, I feel like I'm interviewing you now. No, that's why I'll, I'd be interviewed. I, I don't mind. I'll shoot you straight. Um, I miss it sometimes. It was like so much traveling, though. Mm -hmm. You traveling, really kicked like, your own ass doing that, man. Oh, dude, totally. Well, I, I also had like a really uh, um, clear vision of not being impoverished. So uh, I was basically like just taking all comers. Like I wasn't, I wasn't very good at drawing boundaries and saying no to opportunities. Mm -hmm. because I was coming at things from a scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. So anytime someone's like, hey, Max, I got a job for you, the answer is yes. Now, but would you appreciate where you are as much, would you appreciate where you are as much as you do if you hadn't gone through that scarcity mindset period? Well, since I don't have a time machine and I can't tell you how I would be different, of course, I'm, I'm glad for all the experiences that I've had and I wouldn't be the same person without those experiences. Mm -hmm. And... You know, dude, I'm so lucky. I've met so many people. I've traveled to so many awesome places. <clears throat> um, I got such a broad perspective of the world, and I learned a few languages uh, poorly, but I tried them anyway. Whatever. Um, you did more than most Americans. seemed to like that. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, oh, you mean you went to another country and you tried to learn their language? Yeah. What a jerk. Like. Yeah, I went to Italy and I survived there two weeks on carne e formaggio, <laughs> which is meat and cheese. Per favore, carne e formaggio. <laughs> and that was enough to get me by there for two weeks. Don't even I, get me started. I on went this. into a deli. I left with a <laughs> 500 grams of cheese and 500 grams of prosciutto. <laughs> and I just sawed it off with a plastic knife on the street. I just ate it, and I was so happy. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> Feed me, I'm starving. Yeah, like, <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> Solo a <afamato. laughs> Solo a <afamato. laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. Well, look, if you want to know about Brian, you just got to come meet the guy. He's hilarious. Um, he will communicate to you in memes, but <laughs> I will... Uh, I, I would trust Brian to coach someone who is looking to get exceptionally strong, like someone in their 20s. But I would also trust Brian to coach a very fragile feeling lady in their 80s and challenge them appropriately. And I think that's, that's probably the best thing I can say about the coaching here is that the exercise will be appropriate, but the conversation will probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a, that's, I, I, don't know if I could add much to that besides one of my favorite thing about things about training um, ladies like over 60 is that I can play like golden oldies on Spotify <laughs> and it's just a totally different atmosphere and it's so much fun. Totally. It's so much fun. Well, All right. anyway, hey, 
Thanks, folks, for uh, listening or watching. Uh, come on down to Ambition Athletics. It's uh, super fun, pretty informal. Thank you, uh, Brian, for the conversation. Love you, buddy. Appreciate Love you, too. You. Appreciate and, you. And uh, see you guys next time. Take care.